Hello folks, hope you're all well. Now, it's been quite a while since I posted a video. I have a lot going on in my real life as opposed to this, my internet life. My cat was sick, I was sick, the other cat was sick. The first cat was sick again, but we think he faked it because he lost a fight and was just sulking. I've built a rockery and there's an ongoing battle with a woman who keeps moving my wheelie bin. And as some of you know, I am a lecturer in music production and I'm sure you can appreciate that the end of the school year is the busiest time in education. However, I've had several requests of topics to cover in my videos, so this is the first of the new batch. Now, as I've said in previous videos, I probably buy and sell more microphones than any other item of music technology. And that's because I truly believe they are the most important aspect in shaping the tonal character of your sound after the actual instrument themselves. And I've had several requests from people asking if I can give some advice on buying secondhand mics. So here is my top tips of shopping for microphones on the secondhand market. Tip number one is the same as when you're doing anything online, be safe. If you're going somewhere to meet someone that you've met on the internet, take someone else with you. Tell someone else where you're going, what time you're meant to be back. All the usual things that you do to be safe when meeting people that you've met online. Don't carry large amounts of cash on you unless you've agreed a price and a place and a time to meet. And again, take someone else with you that could maybe hold the cash. If you're buying something like microphones, you probably want to test them. And I'll come on to that a bit later, but it may involve going to someone's house, which is quite reasonable. If you want to test something, they will they may have a studio set up like this, the way you can test it. But Make sure you tell someone the actual address. You could take screenshots of the text that you've exchanged and send them to someone else. But take someone else with you who could maybe sit in the car or stand in the doorway. That's just common sense. Tip number two, regularly read the magazines and the music journals and all of the uh, literature that you can get your hands on. That includes published books that have general advice about microphones and might list some specific models and up-to-date reviews and the sales pages of things like Sound on Sound, Computer Music and any of those uh, computer technology magazines. The main point of that is to know what's out there, know what's current, what's the latest model or what's a vintage model that, and, that you might want to look at or what's going to be vintage in the future. It's almost like the second-hand car market. By knowing what's out there, um, and what is available new, you can know what to look for secondhand. Tip number three, check websites. That's both for secondhand, so checking things like Facebook, Gumtree, eBay, but also if you're browsing for other things new from websites like Gak, Anderton's, Toman, all the usual places that you buy your kit from, just look at what the microphones are going for. How much is this microphone new? So that if you see it secondhand, you can know it's a good deal. Or if you see it secondhand and it's too cheap, there's something wrong with it. Tip number four, know what the prices are of things secondhand. So even if you're not looking to buy things, keep an eye on eBay, Facebook, Gumtree, all of the usual secondhand places, um, even reading forums. So you could look at messages from people who say, I got this for this much. It's also a good idea to just in roughly in the back of your mind know about exchange rates especially in america and with the euro because people will often post i got this for x amount of dollars or x amount of euros and it's easy to trick yourself into thinking oh that's that's expensive or that's cheap when actually it might be quite reasonable and if you saw one in the uk would be a bargain tip number five is it really worth it so i've kind of got a rule of thumb that if I see a microphone that is advertised and it's within about 20% of its full brand new price, I'll think double about whether that's actually worth it for me. If something is advertised at £200 and you can buy one new for 250 and you get a warranty and you can return it if it's not working and you'll get all the accessories with it and it's not been used and it, it doesn't need to be cleaned or anything like that, I would probably wait. However, if it's advertised for £150 and it costs £250 new, that would probably entice me a bit more. Saving of £100 on a £250 mic is, is a good deal, depending on the mic, obviously. Tip number six is test them. If you're going to buy secondhand mics, test that they work. Now, I realise that this can actually be quite difficult. It's 
going to be tricky if you're meeting someone out in public or maybe you're meeting halfway at like a motorway service station which i've done um or you're meeting them on a garage forecourt which i've also done it's quite difficult to test a microphone if you're selling a guitar you can take a little headphone amp plug it in and, and the person can you know or you can play away but with a microphone it's a bit difficult so there are a few options you could take a laptop and an interface and a pair of headphones However, as I said with tip number one about being safe, do you really want to get your MacBook or your laptop out to test something in a public place? Again, if you're taking someone with you, that might be a bit safer. My preferred option is to use a little Zoom recorder or Tascam recorder that supplies phantom power but is battery powered and you can just whip it out your pocket, plug in a pair of headphones, plug the mics in and test them one by one and you can hear if there's any problems or hear if they sound like they should sound or if you're buying a pair of mics do they sound the same that's almost tip number seven as well which is to be prepared and take equipment with you headphones cables that you know work and something to monitor something to listen back so don't assume that if you say to someone oh i'd like to test it that they'll have anything set up always be prepared to take your own kit and test it and you know say to, say to the person before you meet them i'm gonna want to test it for 10 minutes is that all right and if they say no that's a warning sign you should walk away from that okay unless it's advertised as faulty which i'll come on to later tip number eight is we've all got to live on a budget if you're buying something new sell something old not all the time obviously but i am constantly just trying to trade i've got like a constant conveyor belt of mics moving through and I'll trade up things or maybe I'll want something for a specific project that I will then sell on. If you want it only for a short period of time, like you know you're going somewhere for a week to do a recording in a specific location, consider hiring it. It might be cheaper in the long run. Tip number nine, know what you want. Now this is a bit difficult because if you haven't tested a mic, you may not know you want it. But thankfully, we live in the 21st century and we have a thing called an internet. So you can go on an internet and go on the YouTubes and you can look up pretty much any, any anything you want, but any mic that you care to hear and someone will have done a review of it. And if it's for guitar cabs, they'll play a guitar, you know, they'll play a guitar and the cab through the mic and you can hear it. If you want a voiceover mic like this, um, podcast stage they are, have a fantastic range of reviews of broadcast mics and other mics and they're really good reviews so you can hear things before you buy them also you can look out for what's got really good reputation if you are looking for something for let's say to mic up your toms on your drum kit then you'll probably be looking out for a sennheiser md421 or two or three of them if you want something that's great for vocals uh, send, uh, AKG 414 or a Neumann TLM these things have got good reputations for a reason so check them out ask other people look on forums if you're in music education ask your tutors ask your classmates if you're not in music education you can ask me um, I am a tutor I'll give you honest advice my honest advice is, is here free for everyone so know what you want to buy all of the mics that I've got except this crap one on the end which we'll come on to later um, I chose specifically, I wanted those specific mics because I wanted those tonal characters. Uh, yes, I have taken a punt on some in the past when I've seen things that I know are legendary mics and they're for a great price and I'm not sure they'll, I've got a specific use for them but I, it's such a good price that I'll take it and probably use it in the future. Tip number 10, I'm going to keep saying it, be safe. Okay, be safe meeting and interacting with people online. So I've just searched Gumtree and Facebook for some microphones and I've pulled up a few that have come out just to talk about my thought processes about some real world examples really. So first up, there's this Aston Spirit which is for sale on Gumtree. Um, the description looks good, used very little and then describes the mic. Um, local pickup only in Bristol, so probably won't post. It costs 200 uh, and if we look up the new price on Anston's website, they are currently selling for 269 which is not that far off. It's only £70 more, which may mean the difference for someone, but for me, I would want to see that at 
sub 180, especially if I had to drive to Bristol to get it. So that might be a great bargain for someone who lives nearby, but for me, it would be a no. There's also this Rode NT5. Now, wonderful microphone, use these all the time. There's a little bit of damage there, um, which I've you know, already mentioned that doesn't necessarily put me off. It's quite scuffed, the logo's wearing off, um, but it's, and it's got a non-Rode uh, clip with it. But these things are built like tanks, most Rode mics are, and that just shows it's been used to me. It, they will post, they want 80 pounds for it. Um, one of those, and I can only find them actually as a pair, but they are 249, so that's um, 125. So for £80, if I was looking for a, a small diaphragm condenser mic, I would send them a message and ask them to post that to me for uh, £90 including postage. So that represents quite a bargain to me. There's also this SM58 for £40. Now these usually go second-hand for around 60 to 80 depending on condition and accessories. This one looks to be in really good condition. Um, the, my only question would be, is it a fake? There are lots and lots of fake SM57 and SM58s out there. I've bought two myself and as soon as I got them, in fact as soon as I was delivered the parcel they were in, I could tell something was wrong because they weigh almost nothing. And to me, this one may be a fake. There's something about the shape of it, but sometimes that can be just in the photos. It looks a little curved for me there. And uh, I'd want to handle that before I ask for postage. However, if you were confident, um, £40 plus £4 postage, £44, that's still less than most ones you see secondhand. And it certainly does look in good condition. So if you could confirm that's genuine, I'd go for it. Got an SE, SE2000 here. Uh, these are very popular with my students. Several of them have got these. Um, they're great workhorse microphones. Again, built like tanks. And it comes with the SE, reflect, uh, the not reflection filter, the SE pop filter. Does have a little rip in it. It says that in the description. Um, they want £70 for it. Uh, I think it's collection only from somewhere relatively local to me. Obviously, it might not be local to you. But that might be worth taking a punt on if you could go and again and test it like i've said testing it would be very important lastly i found this piece of garbage this is a microphone divine bm 1000 for 55 pounds and it comes with a cheap looking plastic shock mount a cheap looking mounting arm for doing all your podcast and twitch streaming and some cheap looking I suppose that's meant to be a pot filter, but it looks like something I'd strain my tea through. I drink decaf tea, by the way, I'm not mad. The thing that worries me most, though, is this is claiming to be a condenser mic, and it's got a cable that is a female XLR to a mini jack. So I think that that is not as purported to be. I've never heard of the brand name. It's not even spelt microphone, although, you know, sometimes English is not people's first language. You can't get caught up in that it could still be a bargain even if it's not described uh, with you know good grammar and diction but it's not a brand I recognise it looks cheap and plasticky it is that is something that I would say if you think that is a good mic it's too good to be true if you if that was a good mic for that price steer clear it, this name brand is not recognised go and check the websites go and check the magazines and journals and get something that will last you a lifetime because this will last you about eight minutes here's a few extra things to consider when you're buying things second hand the first time you see them it's likely to be just an image or a video if you're lucky that someone's posted one and you're likely to be looking at a lot of items that are damaged or faulty that is not a reason to steer clear of them all the time. One of the other videos I've had a request for is a tutorial on how to mend, fix, clean and maintain microphones. So stay tuned for that, but that might help with the growing in confidence of buying things secondhand that are perhaps listed as parts are not working or having minor faults. If something is reported as not working at all, unless you're looking for spares or repairs for something that you're gonna repair yourself that you've already got, just steer clear of it. However, a lot of mics that are industry standards and have been used uh, in studios and on stage will show signs of damage and wear. 
So for example, the classic Tom mic used the world over, the MD421, is very likely to have dents all over it. As you can see, this one has. This is one of mine that I bought secondhand and right there, there is a dent that is exactly the same shape as the tip of a drumstick. If this has been on a Tom in a recording studio or live for most of its life, it's going to have dents in it. The same goes for the classic snare mic, the Sennheiser MD441. These have dents in them on every secondhand one I've ever seen. However, these are quite good because you can just simply take the grill off and flatten it out with a small rubber mallet or the back of a screwdriver or something soft. And you can just sit there and bend it back in. Uh, that dent there is one that I did after having bent it all back into place. If something is listed as not working, have a read of what the description is and maybe contact the person anyway to ask if it's really not working or if it's not working to their standards. Secondhand Electro Voice RE20s like this one go for around £350. However, I got this one for £100 because it was advertised as not working. I sent the guy a message, I asked him what exactly was not working about it, and he described a rattle and a low output. Now, I know for a fact that these, these mics have a fairly low output anyway. I already own a couple. Uh, but the rattle intrigued me so I took a punt on it because that is quite a saving and when I got it all I needed was some new foam on the inside. I opened it up, had to desolder a few things, it was a bit like doing brain surgery but in the end I got a £350 second hand mic for £100 plus £30 for the new foam. You can also look out for B-stock items. These are things sold by retailers either on their online store or through eBay and Amazon and the like and they're things that have been out on display or sent out for review or have maybe been returned after a short time and then checked over by a technician. This Audio-Technica BP40 should cost around £300, but I got this B-Stock model, which has not got a scratch on it and works perfectly, for £150. B-Stock items are great because they can be sent to your house direct from the retailer and you're likely to get a warranty with them, usually something like a 14-day return. And if you can put up with a few scratches and maybe a dent or two, you can sometimes get a real good bargain with B-Stock. Another place to try, which has kind of been forgotten about in the 21st century, is pawn shops. They often take in new music equipment, guitars, amps, and quite often microphones. This Rode S1 I got from a pawn shop about 15 years ago and I've used it in virtually every live show that I've ever done. It works absolutely perfectly. Of course, in the pawn shop, they might not have the correct equipment to test it. So like I said earlier, you can take your own equipment if you've seen one in there. You can also ask them to put it behind the counter and pay a deposit if you want to come back later and test it. So if you do find a mic or anything else that you like online from a private seller, but they live too far away and it says collection only, it's very tempting to message them and ask them if they would post it and you pay them via bank transfer or PayPal. I would recommend not doing that for your first few purchases. It can work very well. I've got lots of things that way. This Audix D6, which is one of my main kick drum mics, I did without hearing it um, and without testing it, but it wasn't for that much money, not so much that I could lose. So my advice would be, if you're gonna do that, never send more than you can afford to lose if it all goes wrong and it's up to you what that is. Obviously, if you're gonna do it, use PayPal, don't do a direct bank transfer, and don't send money union or cash in an envelope, certainly not, but just do PayPal because you'll be protected, and if things go wrong, uh, keep the text, keep any messages, uh, but ideally, you want to go through the official channels in eBay, Gumtree, PayPal. Uh, so if you're gonna do blind buying, I recommend against it, but it ha can work out if it is a good bargain, and it's, uh, not enough that you couldn't lose it. My last piece of advice is stay away from anything that is listed as professional. That is a code word for rubbish. Something that is professional does not need to say it in its name other than perhaps on the actual blurb on the website. So if you want to buy an AKG C414, which is a very professional mic, it'll probably say somewhere on the website professional applications but those who use them know they are for professionals. Stuff like this cheap piece of nonsense is all over Facebook and eBay and Gumtree. And it says in there, professional studio microphone. 
I got this free when buying a mic stand, and that should tell you all about it. It weighs virtually nothing, and even the electronics inside make me want to gouge my eyes out with a rusty spoon at just how low-grade and terrible quality they are. However, I keep it around as a demo piece for my students, and occasionally I'll do something weird with it, like stick it in a Tupperware box behind a drum kit to get an effect sound, but that's all it's good for. These are always listed as being professional microphones. They're not. Stick with the name brands that you know. Okay, this one doesn't even have a logo or a name brand on, but I've seen them with all sorts of names that, you know, sound like real names that you'd hear on a professional circuit, but they're not. So stick with AKG, Rode, Blue, Neumann, Sennheiser, PV, uh, Rode, Audix, all the plethora of others. And that's why my earlier point about reading the journals, reading the magazines and knowing what is good and what is out there and what is available and at what price is so important. If something is too cheap and it seems too good to be true, it is. Okay, folks, I hope that was useful. I hope you can use some of that. If you can't, then you're still welcome to watch it again and click like. Good luck in your second hand buying. If you want to know anything else, leave a comment. You can always message me. I'm off to have a fight about a wheelie bin. Take care.